Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry and today joining us is Magister. In the first battle he's playing he's gonna be in his Julio Cesare, the tier 5 extremely dangerous premium Italian battleship. And he's not alone. He's coming with Popeye, who's also sailing the Julio, and he's coming with Jade, who, since I speak German, I'll say the rest of her names probably have something to do with her cat. So the three of them in the Julio Cesare, what could possibly go wrong? And they're top tier. This is gonna be a massacre. On the enemy team, there's a New York, a Koenig, a Wyoming, an Ishizuchi, who's probably feeling very unhappy right now, and just one destroyer. They're cross spawning on straight, so the destroyer is either up in A or down in C. Well, he'll find out where he is by whatever gets capped first. Let's do this. So capture fires up the engines, C. and capture they chat B. a little bit about which one they want to capture. And given that capture they're in the Chaser, area which is an extremely fast battleship capture area for, Let's do this. for tier 5, I mean, they can just go and capture all of them. So he's heading straight to the cap, guns to the right, because he's expecting to turn left. And he's got the armor piercing loaded, which makes sense, because well, there's mostly battleships in the enemy team. Uh, they don't have any cruisers, nobody has, uh, just, just one on the enemy team. So if they get to see the destroyer, then uh, they're probably going to have to deal with that by themselves, other than the V-170 there. So he's spotted, he doesn't see anything. That mean The cruiser is up in A, that means the destroyer is in C. There we go. So, he just keeps going a bit forward, and there is the Nicholas, and Mr. Bismarck in the Nicholas, hiding behind the island, which is probably already a better play than 99% of normal tier 5 players are going to do. So Magister here slows down, fires a couple shots at the Wyoming, because he's fully expecting there to be torpedoes coming his way, and he's turning in towards the island, just to make sure that he gets uh, into the cap circle to try and get the cap, and there comes the... Destroyer, who's just been waiting for for a battleship to bumble about. Well, for, unfortunately for him, Magister kind of knows what he's doing, and he seems to have fluffed his torpedoes. So <laughs> he manages to dodge the outer two. I think the rest of them actually went into the island. Now he still has the armor piercing loaded, so it wouldn't really do much against the Nicholas. But um, thinks about it and then decides, "Nah, screw it. We'll, um, we'll we'll move forward and hit the Wyoming over here." See if anybody else can get shots out at the Nicholas. The Nicholas has torpedoes on the other side as well, so I wouldn't have been that sure. So he kind of goes and is like, okay, the Nicholas is back there, he's battling with the German destroyer. I'm gonna take care of this Wyoming first because he's right here and there's another battleship. They're focusing their fire, which is really important because you want to, even though they're just uh, tier fours, they want to make sure that uh, they do away with them as quickly as possible. So he's, uh, he's, he's getting his, uh, he's angling his nose in, just enough that he can get his broadside off to fire, and there goes the first Wyoming. Now the Nicholas back there is battling with the German destroyer. They're keeping, they're, they're holding the cup in C, so there's really no reason for him to go after the Nicholas. Might as well just ignore him. Uh, that was a nice citadel right through the front there, into the Wyoming. Keeps, fire, um, keeps firing the secondaries and uh, just generally makes his life very unhappy this kind of crossfire now he slows down uh he could have he could have gone around here but then he would have been in a crossfire with the other battleships coming up from the north and um, the nicholas is still back busy back there so there's no reason for him to run away he's just slowing down making sure to deal with that wyoming first because there comes the new york and the new york is actually a tier 5 so he's kind of has slightly bigger guns but um, he's pulled or not, so he's run into the island and he seems to be busy shooting at other people and he's got three who the chaser is firing at him. Now the Nicholas doesn't seem to be having a, uh, a particularly good game because he hasn't, he's not holding the cap, he hasn't really managed to do any, to do all that much damage and that New York um, is coming under concentrated fire from the three Julios and but well, that's what I mean. She does, he, he does uh, almost 27 knots. The Nicholas is going to have the devil of a time actually catching him. There's Koenig, German battleship. So fire uh, fires at that thing and gets really good penetrations. Now these shots, he could have actually dived under them, but um, oh, he spots the Ishizuchi, Ishizu which uh, has, is a lower health and it's a squishier, uh, a squishier battleship. So priority target angles away from the Koenig and opens fire at the Ishizuchi. Um, surprised he's not getting citadels here, but um, 
Anyway, she's dead. So that just leaves that one. And that very unfortunate Nicholas, who is uh, bimbling about, trying to set people on fire in his desperation. He thinks about uh, firing some shots out at him. But it's not going to uh, get the salvo out, but again, it's the armor piercing, and the Nicholas is turning away, so he's just getting... Actually, he gets one full pen. So with this relatively low caliber, this is not this is actually working a lot better than you'd expect. There is the König. Now, the König is nose in towards him, which means it's a little bit harder to hit. Uh, he's on fire, but um, he just uh, pops, uh, pops one more heal and gets some shots out of the König. I mean, they've won this at this point. Look at these 295s, by the way. Now, we're going to see a couple more of these in a second. I mean, three Julio Cesares, my goodness. <laughs> um, it's, it's a little OP, isn't it? So where, there comes his next salvo. The Koenig is, I mean, they've lost. He's just trying to minimize the amount and see if he can get some more damage. Out. But look at where his shells are landing. They're landing on the nose, and they're, they're, uh, they're reliably overpenning on the nose. Well, that's a good reason for that. So the Koenig doesn't have any armor on the bow or on the stern. She has the uh, strong belt armor, and the, the, the belt uh, gets a bit thinner towards, uh, towards the front and the rear, but uh, bow and stern themselves have no armor whatsoever. So these 300mm shells just punch right through it. And there you can see it again, 295 damage. So make sure you're hitting these things. Oh, look, the Nicholas actually sunk somebody. <laughs> well, he's a really good player um, by the looks of it. He, he seems to know what he's doing and he goes he goes quiet here. He's on fire because someone's been shooting high explosive at him. Um, so Magister just fires another blind salvo, but uh, game's over. He slows down just in case the Nicholas got some more torps away. Nice move! And uh, he did 51,000 damage. And they, like I said, three Julio Cesar is at tier 5. I uh, have just outright murdered everybody. <laughs> These things are just ridiculous. So well done to the three of them. And uh, uh, good game. They've they've, they've never let had let the enemy have any chance of controlling the caps, and they've just uh, they've concentrated their fire, and they've just eliminated them all. So yeah, well done on this one. In this next battle, Magister is in his Nelson, the tier seven British premium battleships ship. And look, look who is uh, playing with him. That's me in the Brooklyn. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to do with this thing. We're playing bottom tier. Um, I didn't even know he, he was recording this battle, so thank you for <laughs> thank you for doing that. Uh, I had no idea. I wasn't recording myself at the time, I was just playing for fun. The enemy team, we're bottom tier. Enemy team's got a Shukaku, a Colorado, a Kutuzov, <laughs> another AG spammer, an Atlanta, a York, and uh, two tier 8 destroyers. So I'm pretty evenly matched, I'd say. Let's go and see. We're playing Aurora. And the Nelson, obviously, with the gun layout of the three guns in the uh, three turrets in the front, is an extremely um, defensive battleship. Let's, let's say, let's put it that way. And he loads the high explosive very much Good immediately day. and says, hey, defend let's defend our base, let's Good play day. this defensive. Okay? Roger Given that man. there's a carrier in play and we're bottom tier, and the Nelson is notoriously terrible in anti air. But um, relatively good at bow tanking and getting the getting the guns to um, to point well wherever it wants to and it nose in. This uh, should work. So we're all hopefully just staying around the cap circle, except for that destroyer there who's going left, which is not a terrible move because you have to make sure that um, no one's fl outflanking you from that direction. Enemy Benson gets spotted, uh, I think, by the carrier. Although, no, he should go undetected any second now. There he goes. Yeah, he wouldn't have hit him from this distance anyway. The enemy carrier is relatively quiet so far. Ah, uh, there's the Kutuzov. And he gets the first salvo out. And there's the Benson again. So it doesn't look like there's anything coming on the left flank unless there's uh, unless there's anything else going around this way. No, the, uh, the other destroyer has been spotted on our right. And I've actually relocated over to the left just to make sure if uh, there's a heavier push that I have some time to do something about it, especially if the destroyers are coming this way. But the Benson dis decides that, no, no, screw that, I'm not going this way. And um, the enemy team seems to be defending as well. So this is going to be a long-range duel. No one seems to be wanting to push. Now, keep an eye on the Kagero, on the enemy Kagero on, on our other flank. So given that I was holding the left flank, I was kind of hoping the Edinburgh would um, would hold the other flank, and the carrier spotted 
uh, the Kagera, right? We can see him there. He's dropping some torpedoes on him, going around the island. And uh, we, have, we have to keep an eye on this guy. Because if he makes all his, w his way all the way around, then we're going to have to do something about it. But uh, the enemy team, the York has been pushing forward a little bit, has decided like, nope, nope, this is not a good idea. I'm getting, I'm getting uh, dropped by all manner of HE things. And the Benson has found his brave pants. So he decides, oh, I'm screw this, I'm going in, I'm going to push. Uh, of course, being, uh, pushing against the Nelson uh, is a relatively bad idea, especially if you're giving broadside. Now he smokes up, which isn't going to do him any good because I'm in a Brooklyn. <laughs> I, don't have, I have radar. Uh, sorry, I have sonar, but uh, we don't need any sonar because um, because he uh, yeah, Magister just takes him out blind because he was sailing broadside anyway, so it was relatively easy. Defend now Magister spots that the Kagero has been managing to break Roger through. Dodges these torpedoes easy because he's been seeing these coming a mile away. The carrier seems to have a huge amount of problems uh, dropping this Kagero. He's not doing anything else useful. He's just trying to. Um, drop torpedoes onto the Kagero and basically either the Kagero is a very good player or the carrier has trouble with Target the drops locked. but um, uh, it seems like he's having a hard time so I just actually calls that out um, and and uh, this is this is where I where I thought uh, oh we, we had an we had an Edinburgh over here he should probably have it I haven't really paid that much attention I should have relocated much much earlier because look at, uh, oh, it's, it's a shame that he's missed, but that was for too, too much of a distance. Yeah, the Shokako is running right into these torpedoes. And yep, yeah, there he goes. Uh, it's actually the Colorado taking him out, I thought, um, but the Kagera might have had him with torpedoes anyway. So at this point, uh, there I come. <laughs> I, I finally realized the danger we've got on the right flank. And um, our destroyer has decided to YOLO and uh, is, well, God knows where, somewhere in the enemy cup. Well, he's not going to live very long, so we've got a Kagero and the Colorado to deal with, but we've lost our carrier, unfortunately, during this exercise, because he was also running forward instead of going into the safe area. Now that shot uh, falls a little bit short, otherwise he might have had him. And uh, he sees that the Edinburgh and myself are now um, busy with the Kagero. Edinburgh has been smoking, but uh, I've got my Hydro running and uh, I've seen these torpedoes coming, so... Uh, he, he can start dealing with the Colorado and obviously he wants to be nose in. There I am, dodging torpedoes, <laughs> as you do, and keeping fire open at this uh, the, this really pesky Kagero, who's very good at, uh, well, just harassing us from a distance with torpedoes, but never really getting close enough to do much of a, to be much of a threat. But, uh, well, they have taken out the carrier, which is a problem, because for some, well, for some reason our destroyer is still living down at the enemy cup and it's keeping the whole enemy team busy. All of us here are busy uh, sinking, sinking some things. So it would have been good for, for say, for example, that Colorado there. I mean, there are two cruisers. Uh, one of them has torpedoes and a Nelson. We can deal with this ship here. He should have, um, he should have opened fire at the Kutuzov already, quite a while ago. So that's a bit of a shame. While it's good to concentrate fire, you have to keep an eye on the on the score because now our, our destroyer is dead. And we, the Kagero is is still harassing Help! us over here. Enemy aircraft incoming. No so, I'm I'm on AA duty. We'll see if we can finally do away with this Kagero. Uh, these shots look like Enemy they're gonna be they will go a little bit short, but he makes two hits, solid hits, and takes out the Kagero. There come more torps. And now we only have 27 seconds left, and we're 10 points down because we have lost the carrier and two destroyers, and they only have lost the battleship and two destroyers. And carriers are worth more than battleships. So. I'm, I'm too far out from dealing with the Kagero back there at this point, and unless he gets some citadels, which with high explosive against the Kutuzov is unlikely. Uh, Armor piercing might have done it, but um, no, with a Nelson at 8 km, meh, not enough to one shot this thing. About Just about. He takes the battle star and deservedly so. So yeah, this was a bit of a of a stuff up on on my side that I didn't react earlier to the Kagero. And uh, just deal with that threat on this uh, on, on the other side and save our carrier. You know, while it wasn't the Kagera taking him out, the Kagera has taken the attention of the carrier too, for, for too long. And um, and when the Colorado push came in, the carrier wasn't repositioned. So yeah, the, I should have probably taken that that one earlier. Anyway, this is not the last battle. So here we are again. Me and my Brooklyn, Magister in his Nelson, and we're joined by Coyote Pedro in his Nelson. We're again bottom tier, but uh, no carrier this time around. 
one of the things that's really good to play together in a division is to actually, well, decide on the right combination of ships. Now, the Nelson is a very defensive battleship and an AG spammer, if you play her like that, and can set a lot of fires. The Brooklyn is a very defensive ship and can also set a lot of fires. So if you combine these things, uh, you can often... The Brooklyn has a good AA, which the Nelson lacks. The Brooklyn has a Hydro. So if you're playing a support, a support cruiser like the Brooklyn with a battleship, um, you actually get uh, a really good combination of, of powers. Because you, can play, you, you can't play the Brooklyn aggressively easily. So if you're playing with something like a destroyer or with other cr light cruisers that have to push to make something happen, then um, it's, it's harder to support each other. Whereas like this, it's a lot easier. Now we have um, we have uh, two very good players on the other team who I had the pleasure of uh, of fighting against before. There's Mr. and Mrs. Riggs from Zenon. Uh, she's in her Bismarck and he's in his Akitsuki. And um, th these two are pretty good. I, I, I've I've had the f I've had the the pleasure before. So uh, we're bottom tier. There's a Cleveland, a Hipper, and an Akizuki and a Mayhem in the enemy team. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out. We're playing on Silent Shoal. So depending on which side we're spawning, we're going to have an island to, uh, to defend and a flank to defend. But uh, we'll see how this turns out. Any minute now. There we go. Okay, we're spawning on this side. So that island there to the right, uh, that's, that's going to be one flank that we're going to have to hold. And obviously the other side as well. So... Again, we'll just switch this over to AG, which is what Hello. we do in the Nelson. Defend our base. Do not yep, the we're a very defensive no setup Let's with double Nelson this. and the Brooklyn. I appreciate uh, and and a Cleveland, so we we actually don't really have much pushing power at all on our side. Um, There's a North Cal, which could do something, but um, other than that, it's just the Kagero and the Sims who can uh, play harassing, whereas the rest of us is going to have to stick around in the rear and. See what uh, see that we can keep the flanks clear. So I'm kind of staying center here to see what um, using that little island there as cover, and uh, poking a bit to the left because I'm seeing that the Cleveland is turning right. So I want to make sure that I've got our left flank covered if there, that there are no destroyers coming through there, and um, yeah, just start uh, unloading high explosive into things. And there's the Akizuki. So uh, Magister has a target-rich environment here. But um, the Akizuki is reversing because he's currently coming under fire from probably one of our destroyers, which is very surprising. And he opens fire on him and gets one hit, but at this distance uh, it's really hard to hit destroyers with battleship guns. So, yeah, so there's a Mayhem on the other side, but um, I've got this one. He doesn't need to worry about that. He's still kind of staying central. There's a Cleveland hiding behind an island because that's what you do when you're in one of these things. And he's thinking about it. Can he lob it? Yes, he can totally lob this. So he's taking a blind shot. Although the Cleveland's coming out. If he had waited another second, he would have gotten a better uh, a better shot at him. Uh, he gets one. Uh, he gets one semi pen with the high explosive. And um, nice we've managed move. to sink something on the left flank. But by now, all the cruisers are on the left flank, and uh, there's just one battleship coming there. Whereas uh, the other, the rest of the team kind of hangs around in the center. Defensively, oh, that was a good hit on the Akizuki. Had he gotten all, had he gotten all three guns, he might have sunk him at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of starting to realize that uh, we have too much concentration on the left flank, it, and Magister is still trying to sink that Akizuki because uh, he's on low health and he's got the right ammunition loaded for that. Obviously, being in a Nelson, there's still the Cleveland. And um, I think they're all hammering away at our North Carolina over there. Yeah, he's on he's on three perma fires. Uh, Cleveland poked out a little bit too much, so let's see if we can punish him for that. Again, there's no need to show any broadsides, but there comes the Hipper, and the Hipper seems to be making a push on the right flank. So let's ignore the Cleveland for now. Um, just see, yeah, he's trying to get the island in between. The Akizuki is still around there. Yep, it'd be great if we could sink that thing, but again. Um, He's a destroyer, he's maneuvering, he's quite far away. It's going to be relatively hard. So I'm making my way back at this point because uh, we've, our team on the left flank has got this. He's uh, trying to get a shot out on the Akizuki, but I think uh, two of his shells hit the island there. And the Hipper is pushing in. I think we lost one of, we lost our Kagero on this side. 
and the North Carolina is on low health. So our right flank is a bit in trouble, which is why I'm heading back here. Uh, just to make sure that I'm helping out here a little bit. So he's getting fire out on the hipper. Uh, that's a fire on the hipper. Hipper. Immediately the damage controls one fire. So if you're getting shot at by a Nelson and there's a Brooklyn coming, um, you don't want <laughs> to dis extinguish a single fire because you'll be set on fire again in no time. Uh, so also you see that he, he knows how many people uh, are targeting him at this point, which means he has David Beatty as a captain. This is a British ship, which also means he has the monster heal. Uh, there are two permafires on the hipper, yep, <laughs> there we go, <laughs> that's what you get. The hipper's not firing his guns, so most likely he's trying to get torpedoes away, which is, um, he's still six kilometers away, so he's too far for torpedoes and he's burning down, and I managed to get him. There comes the Yakizuki again, pesky little ship that he is. So I've got my guns the wrong way around, which is why I only get half of them to bear. And, uh, ah, not very good hits. There come the Yakizuki Torps. Um, and there come the Hipper Torps, but they're not going to hit anything because the Hipper was out of range and I probably had the Hydra running to make sure I see the Yakizuki Torps in time. And the Yakizuki doesn't want to push anywhere near a Nelson and, uh, and, uh, and a Brooklyn. So we're leading in points, but we've lost our other, uh, our other Nelson on the left flank. There is Mrs. Riggs in the Bismarck. And the Cleveland is holding this island down, trying to set us on fire. So um, I'm, tr I'm trying to suppress the Cleveland. Uh, we could have pushed this corner, to be honest, but I'm trying to suppress the Cleveland at this point, because that we only have a minute left, and that Nagato is in relatively low health. So um, Magister is doing the right thing there, getting her set on fire, because the um, Nagato probably has other problems right now, because he's getting pushed by the Sims. And uh, we're just 70 points ahead, but uh, there are a couple of enemy ships that we can take out, like that Akizuki, for example. <laughs> Although he's done a really good job of staying alive, to, um, helping out against the Sims there. Uh, yep, Permafire and the Nagato. And the Sims are really low health, and yeah, Mr. Riggs takes out the, uh, the Sims, but not before the Sims got his torpedoes away. And there you see them on the left side, just for a second. No there problem. they come. These are the Sims torps. So Magister gets a couple more shots out. I've pushed the Cleveland away by, at this point, and our Cleveland has come around to help as well. So he's realized now he can't make anything happen in, uh, in this corner, not with this kind of opposition. And um, yeah, we're taking out the uh, the Nagato. We, we, are, we are 90 points ahead, all in all by now, and that's game. So very well done. Very good defensive battle against some really good enemy players. And uh, that was great fun. So, again, thank you, Magister, for sending this in. That was a huge surprise, because I do remember these battles, but I didn't record them myself. So, um, well done. Very well done here. And uh, thank you for doing this. That's it for today. If you also want to send a battle in, uh, everything, links and such are in the description. And other than that, I'm looking forward to the next time. That's it. See ya. Bye.